today you see me here sitting in a sea of booba phylums. <laughs> well, this really has got to be done. Someday. So, I figured this day is just as good as any. And yeah, welcome back to Karin's Orchids. And I'm glad you popped into my channel again. Lovely. Nice to see you. And yeah. I really do have to take care of a few of them. Not all of them. <laughs> Don't be scared. I need some more space, all right, in my growing area. I have to compress them a little bit. In the end of this session, I'm going to show you two new cutlery orchids that I got from my local nursery, Orchisons Orchidier. And they are lovely and really good quality plants, from usually from France. And um, from a vendor in France, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just being a little bit secretive about it, but uh, yeah, usually very good plants. So that's going to be the ending of this video. So stay tuned if you want to see the cutleas. Ha. So let's just start with my lovely Bulbophyllum mastercianum from uh, Gro Reschner Orchidine. I had it for one year now and it's in a good shape, I think, but... Lately, there's been a bit of a trouble amongst my a few of my bulbos and my dendrobiums and stenhopias. They're sitting in the same area. <laughs> that could be the reason. All right. And I showered them yeah, quite intensely. <laughs> yeah. Once a week or twice, perhaps. Oh, it was an easy way of, um, of watering them. Really easy. But... What I didn't think about was that they can catch some uh, fungus. And so they did. Got some fungus spots, fungus disease or whatever it is. And I treated all of them with this one, Cumulus. Yes, and I really do hope it did the trick for them. And uh, the worst one, I moved it to a safe corner in my apartment. This is the large Stenhopia. So, now, well, they won't touch each other anymore. <laughs> but this one, um, well, it's doing fine. I'm not really sure that I'm going to do anything with this one, except for removing this little dead pseudobulb here. Yeah, it came off easily enough. It's doing perfectly well in here, even though it's growing out of its pot a little bit, but uh, it doesn't take up much space, so I think it will stay in here. Now over to another one that I'm not going to repot. It's my um, Bulbophyllum medusae from Brandorf Orchidin in, I think, Denmark. I got it at the um, orchid show in Lund. One, perhaps two, well, must be two years ago. Yes. And as soon as I placed her in a little bit more sunny position, she created a flower spike. And I showed her to you in December or November Bloom and Spike video. Well, something like that. One bloom, but anyway, it's better than nothing, as I always say. So this one can take a little bit, uh, quite a lot of sunshine, I mean. It's sitting in a really sunny position, and all that's happened to it is that the leaves are turning a little bit more light green. So, And the best thing about bulbophyllums is that they're not so susceptible of uh, getting a uh, scale and mealybugs and stuff. But they do get other things, such as fungus and spider mites. Well, this one has a growing habit upwards, so I will not, I will not disturb it. It can, it might as well just sit there here in this little hanging basket for a bit longer. Just now it's approaching growing stage here. You can see some green roots. Perhaps somewhere to the side. There it is. You can see some green roots and, well, no disturbance at this point. No, no, no. This one is my large, lovely Bulbophyllum falcardum. The one with the uh, long, slim, cigar-looking <laughs> flowers. Uh, red flowers with uh, yellow, small uh, mm, buds on them. And it's a reliable bloom and it blooms twice a year. So... It's a heavy grower and uh, it's a vigorous plant and it will stay in here forever. <laughs> no, not forever, but uh, 
Yeah, perhaps this one can be a flower spike. Yeah, looks like this when they come out. But, well, just go over it with a sprayer and keep it hydrated every once in a while. And it, this one would do just fine. And Yeah, and it can take quite a lot of sunlight, this one as well. Now, let's look at one I will not repot either. It's my beautiful Bulbophyllum Eberharti from um, Rulke. Yes. And as you can see, a little bit of fungus to the backside of the leaves. Yes, and I treated this one as well. But it's in growing stage. New growth coming out there. Hmm. And here. Here. Yeah. Two years now, I, I think, or three perhaps. No blooms. But I'm patient. I will wait really patiently for this one to bloom. I think it looks nice. And it will go on climbing and climbing and climbing downwards. So I see no reason to what to do with it. Repart it so it will become this white. No, I see no reason. Just go over it with the uh, sprayer every once in a while, I think. And let it sit here for ages. <laughs> I think it's sitting in bark media. So it um, hopefully it won't break down for me. For a while, I think. But just leave it be. And this one, um, it's um, Cirripetalum Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. A real common one. Everybody seemed to have it. <laughs> and it did get a little bit of spider mites as I placed it next to my Ketacedony types when they were in, um, shall we say, mid season, late spring, mid season stage. And they always seemed to get a little bit of. Um, spider mites <laughs> but never mind I just sprayed it with a little bit of soap water and uh, alcohol so yeah it solved the issue as you can see its new leaves are coming out clean yeah it really didn't do any harm to this guy so it's a vigorous one and it bloomed well I think twice for me but this one I'm not sure what is sitting I think it's sitting in uh, perhaps bark or <laughs> like a bees uh, I don't know and a layer of uh, sphagnum moss on top, perhaps. So I would like to get it out of this pot and put it in a pot without ventilation hose. This one, Orphacianum times Grandiflorum. Lovely one from uh, Lucke. It bloomed from, for me. And I do believe this little thingy here may be a flower spike. Looks like this, but uh, a new growth uh, is similar as well. So, well... It could be a flower spike, but it, I think it needs a bit uh, wider pot, so perhaps this one. <laughs> or perhaps something like this instead. We shall see. And here you have one little fellow that was badly attacked by the fungus. Bulbophyllum lepidum from uh, a curling order, a division, I think, last summer. But it's... um. Well, it's trying. And the pseudobobs are still plump here. Look at the leaf. Look at the markings. A couple of leaves fell off recently, as you can see here. On pseudobobs. I really need to get it out of this pot and put it in a, uh, a smaller one. Perhaps I will have to remove this leaf. But, uh, well. In this pot, it is a community pot. Well, that's a good idea. But it's too dry for it. It's bark. Add a little bit of rock wool on top. Well, they seem to be doing great, but yeah, I really did have to work with it a lot as well. So to achieve this, I really did have to water it. <clears throat> yeah, really, really frequently. So let's see what to do with him. And this one is also a community pot. Well, a little orchid It's making its way out of the pot. And this little guy, the no ID that I got from my um, adopted orchid haul in November. I don't know what it is. So let's see what to do with these guys, how to put them in uh, smaller pots, or if I will. I think the most important part is, or interesting part is, what to put them in. What kind of media am I going to choose? Well, I cut a little bit of charcoal. This is going to be enough. And 
I pre-wet a bit of um, coconut husk fiber. And I didn't pick out the um, largest pieces. I This time I would like to have the pieces a little bit um, squashed. <laughs> no, it's okay. Just mix a little bit here. And I would like to have some sphagnum moss. I would want to uh, cut the sphagnum moss to small pieces. Takes a while, but it's worth it to get it more evenly distributed in this media. Quite a bit to reduce the frequency of watering, all right? So I can just relax every once in a while and not having to think about the bulbos more than perhaps once a week. That's fully enough, I think. I've got other plants to attend to as well. And some perlite. Perhaps a little bit of rock wool as well. Last pieces that I got. <laughs> Like this. Mix it up. I think I'll start with this one. Arfakianum grandiflorum. And you also, I hope you saw, it's a lovely flower in my Bloom and Spike video. Fortunately, I don't remember which one it was, but I think it was in January or, or so. So gorgeous. Wow. Well, fortunately, I can now see that it's sitting in. Uh, Coconut husk fiber chips. Chips, chips. Yeah, it sure needs a bit of uh, moisture. I thought it was uh, not in need of any water yet, but it surely is. So, yes. Well, I can reuse a bit of it in the media and don't disturb the roots all that much. Just place it here. Nothing more, nothing less and then add the new media to it. And if I lose this plant, it will be a disaster. I really do love it. I fancy it a lot. Now let's hope for this little guy to be a flower spike. I really do love the flowers. They were, uh, were of a real satisfaction when they finally opened up. No bad scent to them either. So really nice flowers. Doesn't have many years to grow on here but uh at least it's better i hope didn't disturb it too much let's just hope and pray for this one but just sit there and doing nothing is uh in some cases not an option either so i think um uh, yeah this will be great let's stay positive and I will, of course, show you the result in a while. You can remind me of it if I seem to forget to make an update on plants that I repotted. If you would like to see how it all went. Yes, now that one's repotted. So now it's the little Bulbophyllum lepidum's turn. Hmm... It would be a relief to get it out of this pot. Yeah. Okay. Good. Well, it wasn't so bad, except for this leaf. But I would just let it fall off by its own machine. It will not help it. Um, well, shall I have any drainage to the bottom? Perhaps I will use a little bit of bark. Some quite chunky bark media to the bottom. Yes, that's okay. And now let's see where's the newest growth. Ah, uh, yeah, it's here. And that growth, I think, is quite old. Um, so I can just uh, bend it over like that to make it a more narrow plot. Yes, and to save some space. Let's see if this guy even survives. As I said, it's got fungus, fungal disease. 
and fungal disease is lurking about even in the media. So I, well, I think I need to do this. This was a good thing to report it and switch media to new fresh media. But uh, we shall see about this guy. The roots didn't really look all that great, but um, well, you'd be surprised. Okay, does it need a steak? No, it doesn't need a steak. What it needs is a hanger. And to be more, a little bit more pressed down, as well as it needs its little taggy. My Bulbophyllum lepidum now reported into new fresh media. And let's hope for this to disappear amongst my collection. So as I just discovered that I used the, uh, well, the wanted part, <laughs> the one I preferred for my Afakianum instead, I, well, I'm left with nothing. So <laughs> I found this a little, uh, it's been candy on this one. And perhaps I can use it for orchids as well. Let's just release it from the other roots. So what's in here? All right, a few dead, no, not so dead, not so bad, but the pseudobots are really, um, wait, wait a sec, <laughs> what have I done here? It's been sitting here for ages, since I got it, a few years now, actually, this pseudobob is not rotten or anything, <laughs> that's, that's good, surprising, and good, yes, um, let's see, uh, it's been sitting in a mixture of bark and uh, stuff. A lot of lecker beads to the bottom. Why, I'm not really sure, but uh, well, that was a decision I made um, once. Well, it, uh, well, at least this one bloomed for me, so. And it looks healthy enough, so well, I shouldn't complain. What am I complaining about? Well, um, I'm not going to fuss around too much with it. Since I do think that the roots are quite all right in here, although they require heavy watering, which I cannot provide for it, and I will not provide it. I don't have the time and energy to put all my effort into a couple of orchids. So let's choose wisely. Well, yeah, I think this um, container is... Uh, good enough for it but I do think that it's going to be a little bit too damp for it to the bottom since it's been used to sit in uh, yeah, all that lecker beads to the bottom and, uh, and stuff for drainage as well as ventilation holes so let's just get rid of most part of the old bark shall we there's almost two plants in here <laughs> no it's just a really really long plant <laughs> this um yeah, behavior of climbing one way direction. <laughs> yeah, but it will be totally fine. I will have to make some holes to the bottom here. Wait a sec. So, ventilation holes made, and a bit of lecture again. I figured, why not? And a bit of media, I think, maybe. Yeah. And a little orchid. It's not going to be so little in a couple of years. But at least it bloomed for me. Otherwise, I, well, it would have been off to somebody else. That one I can show you. Let's see in which direction uh, it's uh, growing in this direction. So I better press this side quite a lot to the side. Yes, and perhaps put a stake all the way through it, or shall we say over it, to press it down a bit into the pot. Yes, we will need a little hole here, somewhere under here, I think. Now, I made a hole, <laughs> let's see here, under this, uh, this rim of the pot, and this, can you see it? <laughs> Yeah, this uh, stick is going all the way through the orchid 
on top of the rhizome, pressing the orchid down and out to the other side. Yeah. And add some media to the plot. And it will be repotted really soon. I do think it's fun to repot. Uh, ah, I love repotting overall, but uh, I mean, uh, repot the bulbos I like. Really do. Well, not much to look at as a plant, but when they bloom. Yeah, that's when you go out and buy some more. And then you look at the ugly foliage and the ugly girls and don't remember why you got them. I'll just have to lift it up next year to a little bit larger, flat container. And it doesn't matter if you, um, if you bury the pseudobots a bit. It's only good because the roots are coming out there at the base and uh, they don't really like when they get too dry. The pseudobots will shrivel up for you quite badly. So, Well, I do think she looks quite nice. As long as the hanger doesn't lose any grip, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. Now she's uh, reported Elizabeth Ann Buckleberry. Yay. So next one up in the spotlight is this little ready-made uh, community pot, which I'm going to make a smaller com community pot out of. So that's the reason why I'm ripping these guys up from a safe space. This lovely one from Rulke, one of the um, Bubophyllum seedlings they sell at the Orchid Show in Lund. Bulbophyllum ornatissimum, lovely one. And there's no ID. Let's dig into here. Let's see what's hiding. Well, I'm not going to fuss around with this one that much. Yeah, its roots are quite long. The uh, pseudobulb at the end here is uh, quite uh, dead. Yeah, so I better cut it off. Yes. Happened quite recently, I think. Um, this one is still alive, even though the coloration is uh, it's quite ugly, but it's uh, producing some new roots here. So I will just leave it be. My intention is to use this little pot and a couple of lekker beads to the bottom to make it a sh more shallow pot. A little bit of media, a little orchid, some media to the orchid. Nearest growth here, perhaps a little, uh, save a little space for it to the middle. And yeah, don't forget this one. Uh, let's see, where's the, ah, there's a little new growth here with a few new roots. Just a few. Well, it's better than nothing, I think. So there will be a future of this plant someday, I guess. <laughs> so just down you go, as I say, down you go. They're quite unruly, small ones here. They won't stay in place. So they're not so prone to rotting, at least. Um, they do that naturally, of course, the older pseudobulbs, without uh, having to be anything wrong with the orchid in question. But uh, they need the moisture, they really do. So place this tag here, so I know that this little guy is the one from uh, Rulki. And the other one, no ID. Well, I remember that. Now we're all said and done with this community pot, the smaller size community pot. They're quite, um, shall we say, slow growers, so yeah, it doesn't need all that space. So, perfect. This one is a lovely one. It's a Bulbophyllum senefrost. Quite good size now. I got them as uh, really, really small seedlings, so they really have been growing on. Um, and there's something strange coming out here, and it may be a flower spike. This, this one is a um, cross between, uh, I don't really, um, ah, yeah, it says here, Emily Seergeist and Frosty. Emily Seergeist and Frosty. And Frosty, Frosty, yeah, you say Frosty Eye. <laughs> it's a really small guy, and I got that one as well. Maybe this will get these guys going a bit more. Perhaps a little bit of more humidity is all that they're lacking out on. So let's get a little bit creative now, shall we? I plan to put these guys, these two guys, 
into the smaller pot. Well, there won't be any space left for them next year. <clears throat> so, um, yeah, I'm in need of yet another hanging basket. It looks like this. What's sitting in that one? Yeah, it's my Restrepia Musifera. And I would like to have my Restrepia Musifera in a hanging basket. So I found a little Kitlea basket and a little metal hanger that may be, yeah, perhaps it may be suitable. You can use this one instead of hanging, having it lying around in my cupboard for years and years and years. Yeah, let's just use the stuff you got. Yeah, what's wrong with this one? Nothing. It's a bit uh, large, so add a little bit of um, liquor beads and see if I can take this orchid up without disturbing it far too much. Use a spoon. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, perfect. Now, I'm not going to show you my repotting on my Musifero, so I'll be right back. So, now the two pots are all clear. And the little Musifera has got a new home, better place for it. And it seemed to be doing great in its bark, small grade bark media. And it's, she's producing um, a couple of new growth and such. So, well, nice. She can hang amongst my bulbos later on. And add a little bit to the bottom, just like we did before. This one, newest growth, here to the left. So I'm just uh, squeeze it together a little bit in a, in a, some kind of a bow. So it will have enough room here for, for some more growth in the future. This one is going to be easy peasy enough to repot if it stays in place and don't pop up. <laughs> And the same goes for the other one, of course. So I, I just figured I, I don't have to show you the reporting on the other one as well. So it's going to be exactly the same way. So I'll just clean up this mess and return to you with my new Kitlea orchids. Stay tuned. So now, guys, I'm back. This is not a bobo. It's a Kitlea. Yay. And not just any Kitlea. I'm most certain you never saw this variety's flower. Not in real life, nor on picture. And if I'm wrong, please do correct me. It's Cattleya alchimeda. It's a primary cross between Cattleya labiata and Cattleya gascaliana. And, well, I do love species Cattleya even though this is a primary hybrid, but anyway, almost species, <laughs> with large flowers. Yeah, preferably pinkish looking or purple. I love them. But this one, yeah, it was pushed around during transport and two of its leaves, quite recent leaves, I might add, broke, broke off. Okay. But never mind that. The good part with this orchid is that its new growth is on its way, it's growing nicely, and it's a strong new growth as well. And this one doesn't have to be reported. Not really yet, in a while, but uh, maybe I can wait a year or so. We shall see. It seems to be having good roots, really good roots, a lot of roots, and it's sitting in bark media. In a good pot. This kind of pot that I do like. Now, I would just love to give him a little bit of water. This guy has been dry for, well, a week, I guess. And look it up on Google. Cattleya alchimeda. Primary cross between Cattleya gascaliana and Cattleya labiata. And see if you can find a pic. If you do, please give me a link. I'm so curious about what this flower is going to look like, but, well... Something in between Labiata and Gascian, of course, but I want to know for sure. <laughs> All right, I got it at a discount since this happened. And this one I also got. And this is a 
Yeah, he's sitting in water. <laughs> yeah, I think she needed it. It's a Cattleya species. Cattleya Gascaliana cerulea. And I'm after the one that looks exactly as the one I um, lost. But as she said, that some of the plants in this batch came out a bit more pinkish. Yeah, I just figured this one may be a little bit pinkish. Or if it's not, I really don't mind. Uh, a good size Cattleya Gascaliana is really, really difficult, difficult to get hold of nowadays. So I, I guess I'll have to be thankful for what I got here. Two lovely uh, sheaths on two lovely new growth. Leaning to the side, unfortunately, and needs a repot. So I will get it out of this pot today with you right now and put her in a bit larger container. It's gonna be quite difficult, I suspect, to get it out. Let's just start by pressing the, uh, the pot here. See if it helps. Oh, hey, it did. So, away you go. And what to do next? <laughs> yeah. I know that Ketlea Gascaliana, yeah, she doesn't really like to be disturbed at the wrong time of the year before she starts uh, producing her new roots. And that has not yet started to happen, so, um, well, let's just be careful now, shall we? And give her a so-called soft reporting. But in order to press backwards to the side of the pot, I will need to get rid of some, uh, some of the bark to the back side. So I will be able to press it backwards the back side of the pot so I can leave a bit of space to the front for all of its lovely new roots to come out. Well I'm not going to fuss around with it anymore since this is a really precious one as well. <laughs> and just fill her up with some fresh bark. Since it's sitting in a plastic pot it will keep the moisture a bit longer so and I pre wet a little bit of bark media. This is a drier kind. Let's see what I've achieved so far. Oldest part. No media. Never mind. It'll be okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see if I can stake her up and clean her up a bit. Well, I think she lack a lot of humidity. Unless she's got fusarium. I can also make pseudobulbs look like this when an orchid has got a lovely root system and the plant still cannot take up the water. It can be fusarium, but I don't think so. Let's just take uh, her newest growth up a bit. These are the most important ones, the future of the plant. Let's. Treat them nicely. This and the other one as well. My own one usually blooms in uh, June. Um, I think June or July. Yeah, something like that. In the summertime, early summer. So I hope she fills up these sheets with some good buds. Look at this. It's better already, I think. Now at least it looks like a decent plant. Not so flimsy anymore, with the pseudobulbs hanging all to the sides. All dehydrated and shriveled up. So, now I think this one is a much better plant. Well worth the price. And in order to get rid of the white uh, ugly spots, calcium or whatever it is, dust, I'm going to use milk. On a cotton pad like this and a little bit of a miracle is soon 
gonna occur. Look. My previous one never had a delay in a blooming period, so. But they are all individuals, so maybe these are two. I don't know. Hope so. Will be beneficial for us. Now, we get them there. Catlea Gaskeliana. Now, let's give this poor fellow a little bit of water, shall we? <laughs> yeah. And clean his leaves up as well. Alright guys, um, thank you so much for watching this really long Bulba Phylum reporting session with a little twist at the end with two new lovely Catlea orchids. I hope to see you soon and uh, well if you did like this video please hit the thumbs up and share, comment and subscribe to my channel. We'd be happy if you did so. Talk to you soon and have a nice day wherever you are in the world. Bye bye guys.